With the new building completed just weeks ago at the Coon Rapids Recycling Center, the styrofoam compactor and storage has moved permanently into the new space. This while phase two of the expansion project continues with a complete remodel of the original building. We're having um, a break room for my staff. Uh, my office will be in there. Our new pay window will be centrally located in that building as well. For now, you'll find the cashier inside a temporary office, along with recycling coordinator Colleen Sinclair. The staff on duty are happy to guide you through the center. Paper shredding has been moved temporarily into the new building, along with batteries, light bulbs, and wires. Being constructed on the side of the original building will be a shred room where people can take care of business. That will be enclosed, so it's got year-round paper shredding um, that will be heated. Part of the expansion calls for an added drive through lane to improve traffic flow around the compound. Kind of watching behaviors right now to see where people are going um, before we paint those permanent lines. With the current expansion set to be completed by early July, the Recycling Center is looking for a few more volunteers from the community. We're always looking for volunteers, so if somebody's out there who wants to help out here on a regular basis, um, we would love to have you as part of our team. The Alina Health Clinic on Springbrook Drive held a wall-breaking ceremony this week to mark the start of a major renovation project. Over the next three years, more than half of the building will be refreshed and certain spaces will be remodeled. Along with making the clinic more patient-friendly, the goal of the project is to make the building easier to navigate. We're improving the wayfinding. We're improving um, just the natural flow of traffic through the building. Um, there'll be centralized check-ins for each floor, so each department um, on the floor will check in at one centralized desk. Um, so there will be a lot of efficiencies that will gain. The Alina Health Coon Rapids Clinic was constructed in 1985 and saw an addition in 1995. It is the largest Alina Health Clinic and last year alone saw more than 300,000 patient visits. The remodeling project will help expand the number of provider rooms and improve services for patients. It's time to gather with your neighbors for the annual Summer in the City Neighborhood Meetings. It's your chance to meet city leaders and staff and ask questions. The first meeting this year will take place on June 13th at Moore Park from 6.30 to 8 p.m. On June 27th, a neighborhood meeting will be held at Woodcrest Park. And the final meeting is scheduled for a July 11th at Boulevard Plaza. Fire trucks, police cars, and other public works equipment will be on display. You'll also be able to take in a variety of interactive booths, unique entertainment, and a free treat. This week, Governor Wall signed into law a $72 billion state budget, which includes bonding money for two key transportation projects in Anoka County. One is for a third lane out here on US Highway 10, between Hanson Boulevard and Round Lake Boulevard. Thanks to the legislative session, Anoka County will receive $30 million for congestion mitigation lanes, which will add a third lane in each direction between Hanson Boulevard and Round Lake Boulevard. The additional lane will mark the finish line of US Highway 10, which has been years in the making. Right now, that stretch of Highway 10 that we're talking about, again, between Hanson out to Round Lake Boulevard and beyond, carries the exact same traffic that Highway 94 carries in Maple Grove. So it's a substantial traffic overload. So we're pleased. We're pleased with the outcome. Anoka County engineers have designed the project. MnDOT still needs to approve it before construction begins. The other major project in Anoka County Highway 65 secured just over $100 million from the state. Improvements for Highway 65 are planned at several major intersections, including 109th Avenue in Blaine. Highway 65 is considered one of the most dangerous roads in the state. Hello. 
045-623. The Just Between Friends consignment sale comes around only a few times a year. Kids go through so many wardrobes in their um, young lifetime, and this is a great way to get quality items for much, much less than retail. Jackie Wamhoff of Blaine owns two territories in the Twin Cities out of about 160 in the United States. Each territory has one sale in the spring and one sale in the fall. There's also a bonus holiday sale. There's everything from baby gear and children's clothing to books and toys, all ranging from 50 to 90% off retail price. We quality inspect it so that there aren't stained or torn items, that everything's in working order and we have a recall specialist on staff who checks for safety. Anyone can sell with Just Between Friends. You just need to pay a $12 consigner fee and open a tagging account on the JBF website. You then follow guidelines to ticket and prep your items. Sellers get 60% off the selling price. The other portion goes back into running the sale, including space rental, staffing, and marketing. Also, you're not just limited to one sale. If you tag your items and price them in our JBF tagging account, you can bring them to the various JBF sales. The tags are good at all of the sales. Jackie and her husband jumped at the chance when the two local territories came up for sale several years ago. She calls it a wonderful resource for families and wishes she would have known about it when her kids were younger. I love the fact that our parents and families can get what they need and want and be able to afford quality items. Is that everything then? That is everything. Okay, everything went through. Thank you. The annual summer concert series at the Coon Rapids Dam is quickly approaching. The concert series kicks off on June 1st with the country sounds of the Red Letter Band. On June 8th, Ecuador Manta performs Latin Fusion. On June 15th, take in some jazz with the Gypsy Mania Hot Club Quartet. On June 22nd, it's the Rockin' All Stars with 60s and 70s rock hits. And June 29th, the new Riverside Ramblers perform Cajun tunes. Moving to July, on the 13th, the High 48s play bluegrass. On July 20th, it's the country sounds of the Naked Cowboys. July 28th, Jonah and the Whales perform a variety of music. And on August 3rd, the concert series wraps up with a Beatles tribute band known as the Revolution Five. All concerts start at 7 p.m. and mission and parking are free. The summer concert series is organized by the Coon Rapids Arts Commission with funding from the Coon Rapids Community Strength Foundation. Here's a quick recap of the Tuesday, May 16th City Council meeting. An old apartment building in Coon Rapids will be getting some new life after action by the City Council this week. On Tuesday night, the Council approved a resolution for the issuance of conduit revenue bonds related to the purchase and rehabilitation of the Mississippi View Apartments. The 96-unit apartment building, constructed in 1972, is being sold to a development company in Seattle that specializes in preserving and enhancing affordable housing. The total acquisition and rehab cost is $29 million. The city issues the bonds on the developer's behalf and is not on the hook for any of the project's costs. The police department has been successful in receiving a grant from the U.S. Department of Justice. The grant totals more than $25,000 and will be used to purchase several items, including a micro robot that can capture video and audio in hazardous situations, 30 stop stick tire deflation devices, and 40 shatter balls that help keep first responders safe by breaking glass in an emergency situation. For the city of Coon Rapids. In the county of Anoka and state of Minnesota. 
and the County of Anoka and State of Minnesota. The newest police officer in Coon Rapids took the oath of office Tuesday night. Officer Robert Tombers has served as a community service officer for both the Columbia Heights and Coon Rapids Police Departments. His family has a long history of public service, including his father, who's a retired Brooklyn Center police officer, and his mother, who's a retired Minneapolis firefighter. His sister also serves as a police officer in Columbia Heights. And that's a quick recap of the May 16th City Council meeting. As always, you can find the full meetings on cable or the CTN Coon Rapids YouTube channel. Construction on the new fire station off of Mississippi Boulevard and 111th Avenue in Coon Rapids began just over a year ago. After a long snowy winter, job superintendent Daryl Lepper says the project is back on track. We're at the stage now where we're trying to finish up on the north side with the masonry, with the uh, arches and all the brick on the north side so we can start curb and gutter, sidewalks. The interior of the 32,000 square foot building saw the final pour of concrete last week. Now, with roughly three dozen contractors on site, the finishing work can take place throughout the building. We're in one of the four identical bedrooms here. Uh, when the firefighter comes in off the hallway, they, the door closes behind them. They have total privacy. Coon Rabbit's fire chief, John Piper, took us on a tour of some of the key points of interest in the new building, like the large multi-purpose classroom. This room ser serves multiple functions. Uh, the primary role of this room is the training. All classroom training will be done in this room, but the room is also used in the event of a large fire as a fire emergency operations center. We're out here now on the apparatus floor. There's four double deep bays that will house a variety of equipment, including trucks, trailers, and, and different equipment. This new larger fire station also has two additional drive-through bays for the frontline fire engine and rescue truck. When fully operational, the station will be a training ground for firefighters. We've really put a lot of emphasis on training and in order to do that you have to build the training props into the station. So we have a lot of different things here that our training officer will be able to use to train our firefighters to be proficient and uh, safe. Built into the station's design are the latest standards aimed at keeping the firefighters safe from harm. The uh, HVAC systems make sure that everything, all the air on the apparatus floor stays out there and basically it separates all the carcinogens from the turnout gear after a fire and of course the truck starting up and the exhaust, all that stays on the apparatus floor and there's sensors there to ventilate it as necessary based on the levels. The new building will soon replace the old fire station 3 which has been in service in the community for over 50 years. And we look forward to probably the end of July taking possession. Did you know Coon Rapids has a city code regulating the height of your grass? Grass and weeds must be kept under eight inches high. Thank you for helping our city look its best. For more information on this and other city codes, log on to coonrabbitsmn.gov. Want to know the who, what, when, and where of Coon Rapids? Then follow CTN on social media. It's that simple. Whether it's Facebook, Twitter, or Instagram, Keep up with local news, sports, and events. And the people who make our community such a great place to live. So give us a follow, like, share, or subscribe. And always be the first to know what's up in Coon Rapids. That's CTN, helping you stay connected.